fact or fiction. AML, brought to you by the Patient Empowerment Network. How easy is it to diagnose AML? You know, I mean, I think there's a very, there's very clear diagnostic criteria for AML, but um, I guess that doesn't really answer the question. We certainly have patients who come to us after, you know, many months of frustration without a clear diagnosis. So those scenarios can play out. Many times AML is a very dramatic presentation. So people get very, very sick very, very quickly with extraordinarily high white blood cell counts and suppression of all the other blood counts of the bone marrow that come from the bone marrow, like red blood cells and platelets. In those cases, it's pretty clear that there is a type of acute leukemia going on. There can be some difficulty distinguishing acute myeloid from acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Those are sort of like cousins, but very different and treated differently. So it kind of runs the gamut. I mean, it it, it can be pretty clear, uh, but but it, it it's not it's sometimes missed. So this yeah. is a Great lead into my next question, which is about the symptoms of AML. What should be the warning signs that this might be something you need to get looked at? Right. So, you know, at presentation, the, the, the main symptoms are reflective of the fact that the bone marrow, the organ that makes all the cells of the blood, has failed. So that can cause uh, um, severe anemia, signs of anemia, you know, a white sort of appearance, feeling dizzy or lightheaded when standing short of breath, um, uh, weak, uh, tired, fatigue, those are all pretty clear present presenting symptoms for AML. Because the bone marrow also is responsible for making platelets that clot the blood, some people will present with a bleeding complication or a, a very subtle rash made up of these particular red dots. We call that a petechial rash. And that rash can come on when the platelet count gets very low. Sometimes a person will present with an infection or infections that don't go away or don't clear because of the decrease in white blood cells, the infection-fighting cells of the bone marrow. Those are also made in the bone marrow and can, and can fail uh, in the setting of this disease. So those are the most common symptoms at presentation, symptoms that uh, are, are reflective of, of bone marrow failure. You mentioned that sometimes the presentation could be very dramatic. And it sounds like the symptoms are very severe very quickly. Is that always the case? Is that often the case? That is the case in, I would say, a minority of times. That's usually the case. Uh, it's more often seen in younger patients with AML. Typically, older patients with AML have a more smoldering course and a much less dramatic presentation, although that, that you know, the, the sort of very dramatic and, and, um, uh, and dangerous presentation can happen in older patients. But it's probably something like a third of the time that those very dramatic and, and uh, medical emergency presentations occur. How important is early diagnosis? Well, you know, I mean, it's crucial. I mean, in particular, in those cases where it's a very dramatic and, and proliferative diagnosis or uh, presentation, uh, quick diagnosis and recognition of this condition is very important because the sooner a person starts uh, effective treatment, the better the ultimate outcome is. I would say in general terms, that applies to all AML patients, but certainly there's some degrees of variation. So, you know, there's some AML patients that, you know, when I hear about their case on the phone from a referring doctor, it's appropriate to see them next week in the clinic, you know, I mean, so it's not always a medical emergency, um, but, you know, we would never, even in those next week in the clinic patients, this isn't something that can wait for weeks or certainly months. This is something that needs to be addressed you know, fairly quickly. Mm -hmm.